Hello guys, I believe we are now live on the webinar and I want to first of all thank you all for coming and I want to thank BenQ for inviting me to do this. Um, for a few reasons really, one I get to talk for an hour about stuff that I love to do and the other one is it gave me an, an excuse to actually have a shave. I look like the Yeti this morning and I thought I better have a shave because I'm coming on this webinar. All right, so to start us off, um, tell us who you are in that you've got a questions box there who are you and where you're from what time is it where you are as well let's get to know a few people um while we are waiting and now you should be able to see me full screen i'm just getting used to this here right okay good stuff now i'm just going to turn this video off here like that we should be all in full screen We've got Australia in the house, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, Virginia, Serbia, I mean, let's do it, Guildford, really, that's near us, Romania, Portugal, um, Hungary, wow, Malta, lovely place, Malta, Bulgaria, been skiing in Bulgaria a few times, Greece, lovely. Well, welcome to the chat, guys. This is going to be an enjoyable hour, I hope. Um, so, this is what we are going to be doing. I've called it um, five editing tips for beginners, but actually there's going to be loads and loads more as we go. All right. So firstly, let's introduce me. My name is Mark Newton and I run a company called the School of Photography. We teach people all over the world photography. I'm pretty sure that there's a few of my students in this webinar. Anyway, if you are, say hi, it'd be nice to uh, hear from you all. Um, but yeah, we teach photography, Lightroom, studio lighting, um, well, just anything really photography. And I've been doing it, for, I've been teaching since 2002, as a matter of fact, so a long, long, long time. All right, so hopefully I can share some of this uh, knowledge with you today. Um, someone from Cyprus there. Uh, who else have we got here? Northumberland. Hey. Uh, Yes, I'm one of your old students. Philippa, yes, I remember you. Okay, good stuff, guys. Right, so this is what we are going to be doing, right? Um, we're going to be working in Lightroom and Photoshop for all of these editing tips that I'm going to be telling you. We're going to start off um, by looking at basic edits, and I've called this section uh, Basic Edits Are Far From basic okay so that's where we're going to start we're going to start there then we're going to look at working in Lightroom and Photoshop together okay I think it's something that people miss especially if you're uh, a beginner you know you miss out on marrying them two together um, then we're going to look at an easy way to merge images all right and I mean easy you wait and see how easy this is okay we're going to look at or we're going to talk about monitors and calibrating monitors. Obviously, this is a BenQ webinar, so we are going to talk about monitors and obviously how important they are. Um, we're going to talk about exporting to things like standard RGB and the color spaces that you work in. And because of what I know about that is how complicated people make it. And it actually doesn't need to be complicated. All right. So we're going to come to that uh, at the end. Plus, we're going to answer some questions and you are lucky enough because you've signed up for this, you're going to get a discount at the end of this webinar from BenQ for their monitors. All right. And we'll talk about them as we go um, and a discount from us as well for our online courses. It's 10 percent discount from for BenQ monitors, 20 percent discount from our online courses. I will give you the code for that you know, as we go, and you're also going to get it in an email. Uh, I think it's tomorrow morning you're going to get that as an email. Right, let's get started, okay? Let's crack on. Now, the first thing, basic edits are far from basic. Let me show you what I mean, okay? So I'm going to now share the screen now, so you should be able to see the this uh, Lightroom. Now, you should be able to see Lightroom, okay? um let's just if someone just i just want to check here because someone's put 
the sound is the sound okay yes yes you can okay good stuff right well done guys thanks for that yeah so this is Lightroom obviously now we're going to look at like I said we're going to look at basic edits and how not basic they actually are right I think that people this is one of these beginner things they don't you don't realize how just a little bit goes a long long way all right so here's a picture I took down in Portland on the, the south coast of England right and this is the final edit of it. Now I'm just gonna click reset here down the bottom. That is the raw file. Now I'm sure that you've all been in these situations. You see a really nice scene. This was a lovely scene. It was a lovely sunset and everything was going on. And the raw file looks like that, okay? That's what you get from um, when you look at the back of the camera. And if when you're a beginner, I see it all the time that like you, you you get that you, you sort of get the ump because you, you, what you see in real life is not what you're seeing on the back of your camera. Now, it's it's because you just haven't done these basic edits. And over here in Lightroom, you have this panel. It's called Basic, and like I've said, it is far from basic. So let's do some edits. The first thing is you've got your color profile now that for the older people amongst us that would have been like the equivalent of choosing your film so I, I was lucky enough I did my photography degree 1997 yeah I know I don't look old enough but 1997 is when I started my degree I learned with film you know and you used to start by sorry guy Sorry, guys, I just got to. I was just going to look at this. This is coming through. Some people want to see a bigger screen. Are you able to possibly turn your webcam off for a bit while you do this? All oh, right, I know, I know what you mean. Um, I can't turn the webcam off, but I can make this bigger here and I can make that bigger there. So you've got the image a bit bigger. All right, so we'll leave it. We'll leave it like that for now. Um, I'm just checking the comments, guys. I'm really sorry about that. I just want to make sure that everything is perfect before I start waffling on. Uh, could you share your whole window? Yeah, that is not to do with me, actually. That is to do, so someone just said, can I share the whole window? That's to do with the webinar software. I think you can do it your end. You can turn me off your end and make your screen bigger. Um, but I can't, I don't think. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on, all right? So that's it. Okay, I just, I, I want the webcam on because I want to be able to talk to people. So that's uh, just for Ben, ben Q there. Um, right, now, let's get back on with it. So, film, when I first started, this was your color profile. <laughs> you used to go and choose an Agfa film or a Fuji, Fuji Velvia was my choice. So I used to go and pick a Fuji Velvia film because it had a certain look to it that I liked when I mixed it with the paper that I used to print on, right? Well, we're all digital now. Your color profile is pretty much the same as that. You can click on this and you can click any of these here and these are the ones that you work in mainly there is more here but it just gets a bit too complex now it's very easy this was a landscape shot so let's choose adobe landscape right and instantly you can see them colors become more richer okay so we're going to work under adobe landscape all right the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to bring down these highlights i want to make this sunset a lot more richer bring down these highlights. I'm going to lift the shadows so we can see these rocks a little bit better. I'm going to bring in the blacks. That gives you a bit of contrast. And I am going to bring up the vibrance. And what I'm going to do for you guys, actually, I'm going to overdo it a little bit, all right, because I don't know what screens that you're going to be looking at. So I'm just going to overdo it a little bit for you, all right, so you can see it. Let's up the saturation a little bit like that. Let's do that there. and let's just have a look at that if i just press reset so that's the before and that is basic edits okay raw file 
basic edits. <laughs> so, so the point I'm making there, and you don't need Lightroom for this, by the way. You can do that in Windows Picture. You can do it on your mobile phone, okay? Basic edits are far from basic, and this is a beginner's thing that you need to just get to grips with, okay? Just to start you off, you need to do basic edits on all of your shots, right? Now, let's go into a few more advanced things now, all right? So I'm gonna come down a little bit more. We've got this tone curve here. Now, tone curves are brilliant, right? Here, I've just added what's called a standard S curve. And let's just toggle this on and off so we can see the difference. That's before and that's after, all right? It's before and that's after. Playing with curves is brilliant. I mean, absolutely brilliant. It's one. It's more complex, but if you learn about curves, I trust trust me now, right? If you learn about curves, your shots will go from here to there. And there is a tutorial on my website. It's for free. Go onto the website, type in curves at the top there. You can learn all about curves, all right? So there's a st standard S curve there. Now let's come down to the HSL panel, right? Hue, saturation, and luminance. I want to enrich this um, sunset. So in a sunset, you have reds, you have yellows, them two colors obviously make orange, and then we have, and we have orange as well. And let's pump up the blues while we're here just because we want to. So let's toggle on and off of that, okay? So now we can see a much more richer sunset and also the light hitting the rocks as well. And again, I'm gonna just overdo it. I'm overdoing it for this video so that you can see. So I'm just gonna overdo it a bit more. Whoops. That's before and that's after. All right, so we've really enriched them colors now, okay? Now I'm gonna come down to the detail panel. The detail panel is what sharpens the picture, okay? Now every digital image needs sharpening. It's a fact, an absolute fact, especially raw files. So you're taking a raw file, it needs to be sharpened. Didn't happen in the days of film. You could take a picture, you could print it, it would be pin sharp. Well, digital, for some reason, needs to be sharpened just slightly. If you work in JPEG, the camera's sharpening it up for you. If you work in raw, it's not. So we need to sharpen it up. So let's just uh, let's zoom into an area of these rocks here like that. That'll do. That'll do nicely, okay? So I'm gonna sharpen this up. Now, my general sharpening amount is 80 like that. So I'm gonna click 80 there. And let's just toggle on and off of that first of all. So that's with no sharpening. Okay, that's with no sharpening at all. And that is with sharpening. And you can see that there's a dramatic difference already, okay? Now, there's something else with sharpening though. It, it brings out noise in your shot. And we'll look at that in the sky, okay? Yeah, look at that, that's a dirty sensor. Da, 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 see, schoolboy error that. Make sure you get your sensors cleaned. Um, let, I'm gonna zoom in a bit more, three over one. Okay, that is noise. And that is being created by the sharpening that I have just added. I'm gonna zoom out again. You've got this here called masking. If I hold down the Alt key, like this, and I drag that across, you can see obviously it's going black and white. Now, the masking does this. It removes the sharpening effect from the black areas there, from the blank areas. I'm gonna just lift off that for a minute. So let's think about this, okay? It's removing the sharpening effect. We know that the sharpening effect adds noise, right? It's removing that effect from blank areas of your image, i.e. the sky. We do not need to sharpen sky, which means we do not need to put noise into it. So I'm gonna zoom into that again, and now look, there's no, there's still a dirty sensor there, right? It's still a dirty sensor, but there's no noise. There's no noise like what there was before. If I bring that masking down, there's the noise. If I bring that masking up, we get rid of that noise and 
is always a good thing to get rid of noise, especially in landscape shots. I'm going to go back to one over one now. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go back to, oh no, yeah, I'm going to go back to one over one like this. Okay. So the sharpening is now not affecting the sky and all the blank parts, but it is affecting the rocks and the texture, which is exactly what we want it to affect. All right. Now I watch all these tutorials and all these people going on about uh, sharpening in Photoshop with apply image and all of these things. No, the easiest way, I'm telling you now, the easiest and best way to sharpen your pictures is here in Lightroom in the detail panel. I've never found a better way to do it. Okay, let's toggle one and off again. That is without sharpening and that is with sharpening and just to remind you I've now got no noise in the sky and I've got a nice sharp rock easy as that all right the next thing I'm going to come down and show you is this here chromatic aberration it's under lens correction okay I'm going to zoom in again to three over one so on some pictures sometimes you get this which is a green or a purple fringing around your edges now that doesn't matter if you've got the most expensive camera in the world or the most cheapest camera in the world the most expensive lenses in the world or the cheapest it just happens okay it just happens and it's a very sort of scientific thing about waves of light crossing and all that which you ain't got to worry about and i've not got to worry about what we have got to worry about is how to get rid of it in a picture and here we get rid of it just by clicking this button here remove chromatic aberration and there you go it goes okay that's with it and that's without it it is as simple as that okay um, and there's nothing else I want to do to this so I'm going to zoom back out again oh there is something else I want to do to this obviously I want to crop it I'm going to come up to the crop tool and I'm going to unlock the crop so that I can do it independently I'm going to bring that down here because if you know about photography you would have learned about composition and things like that well this cloud i want coming in from the right corner sorry from the top left corner here like that these are coming in from here these waves are coming in from here these uh, rocks are coming in from there and it just makes for a really nice composition it looks a lot better than it does there so let's do that and let's crop it and now let's look at the before and after so i'm going to just hit the reset button that's the before press control and z and that is the after all right i'll do it once more that's before control and z and that's after right basic edits are far from basic that was the title of that section and hopefully you've seen that there so you take a raw file i'm going to come back to camera sorry i'm going to do you know what i'm going to forget about doing this so much uh stop showing screen there we go yeah there we go right so basic edits are far from basic okay that is what you are missing out on in photography if you do not post process the shots okay that was a typical scenario that i get into and all of my students get into they come they show me this pic they go out to a really good place a lovely sunset they come back and go look at this i took this and it looked nothing like what i was looking at and i said and i show them this and they go all oh, right i'll get lightroom and learn it then and uh, that's it okay so that is that's that section there okay um it's a thanks thanks alex uh i'm glad that you like that and let's move on to the next one so the next one is oh yeah working with lightroom and photoshop together i'm just going to take a drop of drink guys it's not easy talk i feel like just talking to myself right now lightroom and photoshop come together all right now i am not um a spokesman for adobe at all um they come as a package right and they come as a package for a reason because you are meant to use them together and one of the beginners um 
mistakes if you like when when you first start to learn and you know i'm in a i'm in a uniquely uh privileged place talking about like beginners tips and beginners mistakes because i teach thousands of people and i get that and it's the same questions all the time so so i know that this is a question that people will ask because you want to and understandably so you want to just learn one of them because they're bloody hard to learn photoshop and lightroom um so why learn both if you can just learn one i wish i could say to you you know Yes, all right, you only have to learn one. But if you really want your work to stack up, if you want to be professional, if you want to, if you want your work to stack up against the best out there, you're going to have to start using both together, I'm afraid. I'm going to show you uh, why now, okay? So now I'm going to have to bring this up at the bottom here. Uh, someone from Jamaica there, Paulette and someone from Serbia, uh, Darko from Serbia there. Welcome to the uh, webinar. Right, so here we go. Let's start with this one here. Okay, so that's a fully edited picture. Okay, that's had the full, oh, sorry, sorry. I need to show the screen again. Oh, Christ, I need a producer here with me. Right, here we go. We've got the, uh, the screen is shared, he says um yeah no it is i know it is right okay so here is a fully edited picture right this has had the full works on it okay lightroom and photoshop let's go to the lightroom edit so here is the lightroom edit here is the photoshop version now before i go through it even further i'm going to reset this I won't let me do it, I don't think. Don't worry about that because I've imported it from another place. Oh yeah, it did. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, so that is the actual raw file. So that's the original raw file right there. That is the Lightroom edit. And here is the Photoshop edit. Slight difference if you're looking there like that. You're probably not going to see much difference between that and that but let's look a little bit deeper into the picture okay let's zoom into the eyes okay so that's the eyes of that shot and this is the eyes of the Lightroom edit okay there's the Photoshop edit and there's the Lightroom edit okay so if we go back to the Photoshop edit what you can see is the eyes is brighter okay the colors in the eyes, the brown eyes are coming out more. The bags under the eyes have been removed as well. Let's go back. So that's before and that's after. The other thing that you should be noticing as well is the skin. The skin's been retouched and it's a lot smoother. Now there's a lot of ethics. I know that about retouching uh, pictures and it's not realistic and blah, blah, blah. I know all about that. I've known about it for years like you all have. But I am telling you, someone else is going to do this and their shot's going to look better than yours. It's just a fact, okay? So you, you've just got to, I don't know really, I don't know the answer to it, I wish I did, but you've got to do a bit of retouching on your portraits. Um, so there's the skin from before, that's the original skin, and here is the Photoshop skin. So you can see I've removed some sort of um, blemishes there. The skin's all nicely smoothed out. Let's come up to the lips as well. There's a bit of lipstick missing there. So we've I've re-added it in there. And there's all of these fine details that you're missing out on if you're not doing the Photoshop bit, okay? The other thing is, I'm gonna come down to here. And let's come down to here again like that. The dress section here has been removed because I just found it a bit off-putting in this picture here. So you can't do that in Lightroom. You need to use Photoshop, all right? And the other thing is this light in the background was also, it was there for part of the picture, but it's also there to give a highlight down this part of the face. Now, if you've got a light in shot, it will burn out, okay? It's as simple as that, it's gonna burn out. So you're gonna need 
to bring it back a little bit in Photoshop, okay? So there is a quick one. We'll go, we'll go into Photoshop in a minute uh, and have a look at a couple more. But there is an example of why you use both. Lightroom is gonna do your, your basic edits like what I just showed you a minute ago, okay? Lightroom's gonna do your basic edits. Photoshop is gonna put them magical touches in and do the fakery, all right? For want of a different expression, okay? This is what I tell my students. Lightroom enhances the truth and Photoshop tells the lie, okay? And you know, you're, you, if, you, if you're not doing both, you're missing out on one or the other, okay? Um, let's have a look at another one, look. So here, we have got a, obviously a landscape, long exposure landscape shot that I took. Here is the Lightroom edit, okay? And if I click, this is actually a HDR as well. So this is a HDR Lightroom edit. Here is the Photoshop edit. And the sharp ones amongst you would notice that something is missing there. And it's a massive, massive bridge. Um, let's right click on this and let's view it in Photoshop so you can see it a bit more. All right. Got to wait for that to open. Right, here we are. Press Control and Zero to full screen it. My mic dropped. Uh, if my mic's not working, put it in the old comments. Good, you're back. Okay, thanks, thanks, Lonnie. Lonnie, that is, yeah, thanks, Lonnie. Okay, um, right, so here we are now in Photoshop, right? I'm just going to hide all the rest of the picture, and that is the Lightroom edit. Okay, so that was what's done in Lightroom. That's a HDR merge in Lightroom, and it's produced this. And some people would be happy with that and, and it's fine, you know, I wasn't. I wanted to remove this because it was getting on my nerves. I wanted to create with this shot actually, what I was going for was like a surreal look, like surrealism if you know, well you, you would know what surrealism is, right? So I wanted to go for that kind of look, like this dreamlike scene, okay? So I didn't want a jetty in my dreamlike scene, so I removed it in stages like that. You cannot do that in Lightroom. That's what Photoshop is for. The horizon line there, I wanted to blur it a little bit. So I basically done up what's called a stamp visible, blurred it and masked it out. It's as it's easy as that really. So if I zoom in a little bit. So I blurred the horizon so it kind of looked like it was just drifting off into, well, any, anywhere really into a dream. And then I added what's called a gradient map. And you can see that it's just color toned it a little bit better okay now let's go back to lightroom i'm going to shut that down uh no i don't want to save anything so again another example of working with lightroom and photoshop together all right let's go to another one this one here so this this one here uh your classic shot i take groups up london to take this shot right it's a tower bridge with a bus going past. Now, it looks a lot simpler than it is because when you go to London Bridge, well, not now, uh, it's packed solid with people, right? That's six o'clock, seven o'clock, right the way to 11 o'clock in the evening. Someone is going to get in your way. So what you do is you take two pictures. You take this picture here because you want all of these streaks. It's got someone else there trying to take the same picture that I'm taking at the same time. You take another picture when they've all disappeared or when then people have disappeared. You merge them together uh, in Photoshop and all you do is mask them out. You just mask the people out and you get a shot like this. So there, there is again why you need both together. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, I can just do that all in Photoshop. You can actually, as a matter of fact, you can do that all in Photoshop. The difference with working in Lightroom is it's gonna keep you all organized 
keep your, all of your key, get all of your keywords in your pictures, keep them all nicely in folders, um, and it's just going to make it easier for you in the long run when you export the picture again. So you want to export it later on, as which we're going to come to later on in this webinar, export it in JPEGs and things like that. Um, so there's another example. Here is another example from uh, our next course. We've got a, we've got a professional face retouching course coming out soon. Keep your eye out for that. But we also we do a section on newborns in that. So we th this is one of the shots from it as well, as a matter of fact, that one there. But so is this one because we focus on newborns. But only so we do a newborn lesson in it because if you are going to do studio portraiture and you are going to want to do these professional retouching, you're probably going to be asked to do newborns. And retouching is something that you're going to need to do on newborns. Again, controversial, but not really, because if we look at this picture here, okay, newborns get milk spots, right? Um, well, not all of them. And you want to do a newborn shot within the first six weeks of, of them being born, obviously. And you're going to get them. And no mum wants that. They want the baby smooth skin, which they will have in a few weeks time when their milk spots go okay so what you do is you do your basic edits in lightroom so if we come up here again uh you can see that i've done some basic edits here let's reset this so that's how it comes out as a raw file that's the lightroom edit and then you export it or you edit it in photoshop and this is where you can do the magic. This is where you can do the lie, if you like. If you like. Um, I'm going to take a sip of this one. That's loading up. Oh, here it is. Okay, here we go. Right. So let's go back to. That's the Lightroom edit. Okay. And if I'm going to zoom in for this, actually, so you can see it a bit better. All right. Now watch this. There is no. What I'm going to show you now. You can't do in Lightroom. This is why you use Photoshop. So that is to get rid of the spots and the blemishes. And you can see that I'm coming a little bit further. Okay. This folder here was where I retouched the skin and smoothed out the skin. This folder, this one here was brightening up the eyes. Okay. Control and zero and uh, this one here the levels adjustment layer is for these areas here okay so again there's the before and there is the after okay so i'm going to close this down and come back into lightroom so let's take this as a total example of i mean I, i'm just assuming that most people on this webinar are professionals or aiming to be professionals or hobbyists right but whatever you are it starts like this a load of pictures get taken okay <laughs> whether you go out to take a landscape or you do a newborn shot you're going to come back to the computer with 200 odd pictures or whatever you've done all right lightroom gets all of them in to, to your folder system it keywords them all it sharpens them all up at once um, it puts contrast in them all at once and anything else that you want to do. So it does all of that. Then you go through them, you flag them, you flag your best ones, you delete the other ones that you don't want. Then you get your favorite picture like this one here. And then you that's when you can go into Photoshop and do them finishing touches. OK, yeah. working with them two things together speeds you up tenfold. OK, now. So that was it, really. I, because it's just something that I get asked a lot. It's something that actually I get asked a lot. I get told I'm not using Photoshop because it's too hard, or I'm not using Lightroom because I use Photoshop. I do it all in Photoshop. All right, well, fair enough. That's up to you. But I try to make the point of what you're missing out on um, if you don't, like, if you don't do both of them, speed you up and you get much more professional work. And for those people that are entering composition competitions, or certainly those people that are wanting to be professional, right? If you don't do that, someone else is, and they're going to get the work. It's a fact. Okay, so there you go. Right now, 
Um, but you can't use the camera. But you. Okay, so Karina. Well, I'm going to answer questions at the end, but Karina has just asked a, a good question here. Her name's Karina. Um, she's saying, I think what she's you're trying to say is, but you can do what I've the Lightroom stuff in Adobe Camera Raw. Yes, you can but you can't do it as quickly and easily as you can in Lightroom and you can't do it, um, it it's not going to organize all your pictures for you in folders um, it's not going to put them keywords in for you as you import them it, there's lots of things I mean just put it this way you wouldn't have Lightroom if you could do it all in Adobe Camera Raw Adobe Camera Raw is there for people who don't really want to use Lightroom as a matter of fact and uh, my point is that you should learn them both anyway I'm not going to answer anymore I'm, going to, I'm getting distracted we're going to move on to the next part, right? Um, which is, oh yeah, an easy way of merging two pictures together. You're going to like this. This is brilliant, right? Here we have two pictures of the Manellian Bridge in London. Okay. Now let's talk about the reasons why people want to do this. Happens all the time. Bright sky dark floor certainly happens in night photography certainly happens when you're doing a landscape shot and especially if it's a sunset and stuff like that bright sky dark floor loads of ways you can edit them HDR and this that and the other but this this is a really simple way it's a really really simple way you have two shots one that you expose for the dark part the foreground and one that you expose for the background so here we have them here this is uh, exposed for this part of the shot and this one here is exposed for this part of the shot I say so you can see that that is exposed for that and it's too bright in the background whereas this one it's nicely exposed in the background there but it's too dark in the foreground okay um, so what we do is we open them up in Photoshop and we mask one out to show the other one underneath so let's do that uh, I'm going to hold down the control key or command if you're on an Apple Mac I'm going to right click on these pictures I'm going to go edit in and I'm going to choose this one here open as layers in Photoshop just like that okay and it's going to do its thing and I'm going to take a sip of drink All right let's do it soon like that and here we have both shots right I'm gonna press control and zero to full screen it there's the dark one and there's the light one all we need to do now is add a mask and use the graduation tool so make sure that's selected the top one's always selected add a mask over here you've got your gradient tool I'm gonna to click on that you need to make sure that you have got foreground to background color there now by default it should be there by default and by default again it should go to black and white here but if it doesn't just check and it should do and then quite simply I'm going to click on my screen about here I'm going to hold down the shift key as well so it goes nice and straight bring it up to about there release and there you go that's how easy it is right watch this I've just brightened up the foreground I told you it was easy <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control and S to save it and then it's going to save it uh, in Photoshop and this is another thing about working on them both together it's saving now a PSD for me and it's now adding that into the same folder as the other two pictures it's adding it into the library of my, my Lightroom library and keeping it all nice and neat for me so if I go back now into Lightroom here it is here that's what I just created it's called edit 2 I've already got an edit so it called it edit 2 all right and then now we've got a much more balanced shot already okay so that's the one before uh, sorry that's the bright one that's the dark one bright one dark one balanced shot really is as simple as that and then we do our edits just like we looked at before first thing I'm going to do is improve the composition by cropping it 
let's bring that into there I still want that light beam there like that uh, let's bring that in again it's all about diagonals I think bringing that in there like that and bringing that up a little bit like that so that's the crop that I want oh no I'm going to crop it again I'm going to use this angle tool and try it and get a straight horizon that's better crop it like that good bring down the highlight slightly lift up the shadows wax and blacks in there bring up the vibrance tiny bit of saturation i think uh whoops and let's put an s curve in but just to be quick i'll add their own preset one in which is a medium contrast one down here it's looking too green it's looking too green in the uh in the water there so let's clean up the river thames a little bit let's pull them greens out and then aquas uh i quite like adding magenta into night photography actually bring up the oranges a little bit as well yeah it's just slight you might not be able to see it on your screen but i can see it here that's just slightly what i want and then again we're going to sharpen it zoom into one over one when you are sharpening pictures always view your shots at one over one okay 100 percent of the pixels let's bring that sharpening up around about 40 odd 50 odd percent hold down the masking uh, hold down the alt key and let's mask it off of the blank areas we just want it where the white where the white is is where the edges and the texture of the shot are so we just want it there and not on the sky and let's toggle on and off of that to have a look yep look at that nice and sharp let's zoom back out and that is it i think that will do us that will do us let's have a look at the before and after okay so there is the image that we edited in photoshop and then we've just done some lightroom edits on top of it you could have done that in photoshop as well using different things but it's much quicker to bring it back into lightroom and do it in lightroom okay so there you go let's go back to that that's one raw file a bright one that is a dark raw file and that's how quickly and easily you can merge two pictures together okay so you can do hdr merging as well and you can do um oh, i can't remember what it's called really or whatever there's loads of complicated things but you know what if you are starting you're a beginner just take one shot that is overexposed if you like or one not overexposed sorry that's wrong take one shot that is exposed correctly for the background or the bright parts take another shot that is exposed correctly for the foreground go into photoshop mask it out job done all right um my ethics <laughs> come back to uh right okay very good oh yes we're, we're gonna go over a little bit guys but i don't mind if you don't the next thing that we're going to talk about is uh monitors and calibration okay a real headache um a real headache here i need to get to my notes for this so firstly let's talk about monitors all right you've got your standard mon monitors and now ironically we've got um i've got two benq monitors in the office and they're brilliant i've got a 2k one and a 4k one as you know everyone's working from home at the minute and i'm actually working off just a standard normal monitor at the minute and it is nowhere near as good as the uh, photography ones but let's first of all let's talk about them so first of all you have a hd monitor a normal hd monitor which is the one that i'm working on at the minute then you have a 2k monitor and a 4k monitor and these are the common ones that you will do your editing on and let's just um talk about that for a minute because basically as you go up from hd 2k 4k what you're getting is more pixels more pixels on your screen and i'm going to try and um Put it into i knew this was going to happen stop showing screen right now we're back to me now right so oh christ now um i'm going to try and put it in layman's terms so let's imagine a 27 inch monitor okay that's the size of it a hd one of them will have 1920 pixels along its longest edge a 2k 
27 inch monitor will have 2040 odd, I wrote it, yeah, 2048 pixels along its longest edge. So effectively, in the same amount of space, you've got more pixels, okay? And then you've got the 4K monitors and they have 3840 pixels along the long side, along the longest edge, right? HD monitor, 1920, uh, 4K, or it's called Ultra HD actually, um, 3840. So there's a lot more pixels in the same area, right? And what that means is that you see more detail and you really notice it, okay? It's, I mean, I'm noticing it now because I'm editing on this screen. This one's just for PCs. It's not really for photography at all. Um, but you do notice it when you're editing. Um, it's not like, oh, it's a, I've come to something else first. The other thing with monitors is the color space that it works in. So a standard monitor works in what's called standard RGB, okay? That's what normal monitors, laptop that I'm on, that works in that. Your mobile phone, tablets, normal screens, uh, they, they work in standard RGB, which is fine. It's got loads of colors, millions of colors. But then you get photography monitors. These are the ones that we've got at work, the BenQ ones. And they have got a wider, what's called a wider color gamut. They are working under Adobe RGB, okay? In layman's terms, it means that you've got more color. It's projecting to you more color. Now, no monitor, even them ones, are gonna to project to you the amount of colors you can see in real life, okay? So you see millions, millions more colors in real life than you do on a monitor. But the Adobe RGB color space projects to you millions, millions more. And it, and it is it is a difference. You can see a difference there. And it's mainly in the blues and the greens of your images. It comes in handy, obviously, for landscapes and stuff like that, right? Um, and the other thing with photography monitors that's different to a normal monitor here is it's got, a, they have higher bit rates, um, sorry, they have higher bit depths. And in layman's terms, again, what that means is the graduation of tones, of colors and tones are gonna be finer. You may well have been editing a landscape picture with a pure blue sky, this is where you see it, this is where you see it a lot, a pure blue sky and you're editing it on a normal monitor, like this crappy one I've got here, right? You'll see banding in the sky, yeah, you see banding of blues as it's graduating from a dark blue to a light blue. That's to do with the bit depth of the monitor. So photography monitors have a higher bit depth, which means that you don't get that banding. It's lovely and smooth throughout as you're looking at it, okay? So there are benefits there to getting, um, you know, bigger and more photography or editing types of monitors. It won't make your shot, right? And this is important. It's not gonna make your shot. Your knowledge and you going out in the field and, you know, all of your experience, that's gonna make your shot. And you've just seen me, I've edited them on a normal monitor, all right? So, I don't get sort of hung up on gear, and that's that's all gear, lenses and everything. But what it does do is it just makes your life a bit more easier when it comes back into editing, all right? You know, it, it will make your life easier. You'll see that you, you notice the difference when you come back to a normal monitor, I can tell you that much, all right? So that's monitors in, in a nutshell for photographers. Now let's talk about calibration. It's so much easier these days than it was so I, i'm uh i've got the benefit of actually um so i've got the benefit of be, be learning in film and going into digital it was an absolute nightmare to calibrate monitors a few years back it was just a mission you had to do it all on screen with these gray bars and just it was just a total nightmare right well, it's not like that anymore. It's really easy. All you do is you buy a monitor calibrator. Uh, this is the one I've got here. I use this one here, right? And you put it on the on your computer. You go through the software. 
press the follow the instruct, instructions on screen and your monitor is calibrated right it really is as easy as that um the reason you calibrate your monitor is so that you get accurate colors it's just as simple as that like so you your colors that you're seeing on your screen will be accurate and not only that they will be accurate to someone else who's got a calibrated monitor okay now this is important you can't help someone else's screen so you can't help if you've done your bit here and they're looking at it on their phone and it's totally saturated i mean samsung phones are really saturated in color and they do that because they want their their camera to look good so that, you know that's why they do it so so you can't help that right so that's the first thing someone else's monitor is not your problem what your problem is getting your monitor correct or your monitors correct so that when you send a picture to a client or to a print lab this is where it really gets important the colors are accurate okay um now the sorry i'm gonna get some notes here um so then these uh monitor calibrators they're quite expensive really they're about 150 quid and there's a few different brands that you can get but you can and i've known this from the people that i teach you can buy them for a group and i think that's a good idea or a camera club you know buy them together because you can just all share it and use it and that's it really and um, they say you should calibrate your screen every month but Nah, you don't need to calibrate every month. You, you can, I mean, Christ Almighty, I can't. But six months ago, the last time I did mine, and because because once I used to, I used to do it every month, and it never made any difference. And then you sort of forget. But so you could buy one as a group, is what I'm trying to say. All right. So there you go. That is monitors, and that is calibration. The calibration is a lot easier these days. Trust me. All right. Um, now. I heard that you don't need to calibrate Mac displays. I've heard that theory as well, but I've also, I don't, I'm not a Mac person, but someone else who is a Mac person who I do know who's a photographer says that you do. So I don't know the answer to the Mac thing. Um, and I'm come to questions at the end. Right, the next one is exporting to standard RGB and all of these color spaces that you work in and all blah 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 right oh my god i've had conversations with people i get emails and people have, are all going mad right? over over what their their screens color spaces are working in and this that and the other all right let me just make this really simple for you okay adobe adobe photoshop and adobe lightroom which is what we obviously we're using today they have got absolute boffins back in wherever they are, San Francisco, or whatever, doing all this hard work for you. So don't change their settings, all right? Leave their settings alone. When you start getting in trouble is when you start to muck about with them settings, okay? It's easy. Calibrate your monitor and have a decent monitor. Then you work, I've never changed the settings ever in Photoshop or Lightroom. Then you work in the default settings that they put it in and everything is absolutely fine. Trust me, it goes wrong when you start mucking about with your on-screen um, settings, okay? Um, so that's the first thing to remember, okay? Just don't touch things. <laughs> That's the first thing. Um, and the second thing is exporting pictures. So you're going to work in all sorts of, like in Lightroom, and if you've got a monitor that is uh, like a BenQ monitor, you work in Lightroom under the Pro Photo color space, and that works all lovely and nice, and you see it all brilliant. Like I say, it's all default settings. You don't have to worry about it. When you export the picture, you can export it in a various in various different ways. But again, I'm going to make it really easy for you. Export it as to standard RGB. All right. Do not start mucking about. And I'm going to tell you why. Firstly, if you're exporting for screen, so if you're doing pictures for a website or whatever, most other monitors across the world and phones and tablets 
all work in standard RGB. So there's no point exporting it anything else. So that's the screen. And for print, it makes hardly any difference at all if you export it into Profoto or Adobe RGB or anything like that. That is for really advanced people that are using specific printers that need specific color profiles and they're using specific papers to print on and it's an absolute minefield, right? And if you want to get into that, then that is fine, but you're going to have to get into that and you're going to have to learn that. It'll be like another whole section of your learning, okay? I'm going to give you two scenarios that, that I've worked with very recently when it's come to all of this working with calibrated monitors, exporting for print and everything like that. I just had an exhibition up London. It was sponsored by uh, Olympus Cameras, okay? Olympus Cameras UK have got their own professional print lab in-house. Yeah, you go into it and it's this big <laughs> room with massive printers. It's like, it's like a spaceship when you go in there, right? And you work with a professional print guy, okay? So I've, I've worked on my pictures in Lightroom and I exported them full res at standard RGB. I have a calibrated monitor. Yeah, this was on that 4K calibrated monitor. I go down to the print lab, give them the thing, the pictures, we look at a few tests, done. It was like that. Printed one out because he's he's got his system set up. So my system set up, his system set up, end of story, right? It comes out, it looks great, done. And that was for an exhibition. So it has to be absolutely brilliant because they're up obviously in a gallery wall, people get really close to them representing Olympus so obviously it's got to be pucker right so it was and that's how easy it is if you just leave it to Adobe's own defaults you export to standard RGB and it's done and then I'm going to give you another scenario um, I did some work for someone and I sent them off to a, a pro lab I, I don't know how to explain them they're probably like a, a mass production pro lab I suppose they but they're called Loxley Color they're up north um and again i've got my system set up i've got my monitor calibrated i've done everything that i wanted to have edited edited the picture everything's great i've exported it as standard rgb and then you upload it and you go through their website and this is important they have this little tick box and it says uh, free of charge uh, one of our experts will color correct your picture okay tick that off because you've done your job okay tick it off you don't want someone else to look at a perfectly calibrated screen and everything and then change it because it just don't work so you so i tick that off i say to them i effectively say to them no i've done my bit i'm trusting that you've done your bit and they send you the print and it's and it's absolutely perfect absolutely perfect and that's with a print lab that you email your stuff to okay so there you go that is that's because that's a really sort of headache of a question that I get all the time. And it's because people are clicking things that they don't know about. Leave it to Adobe's defaults, export to standard RGB, job done, easy as that. Okay, it's question time, guys. It is question time. So we're gonna have, we are running over a bit. So let, I've got some questions here, bear with me. I will try and go for, oh Christ, I don't know what I've done here. Uh, go down to the bottom. Thank you. I've had to. Uh, so. Ah, okay. Here's a question from Andrew Daniel. And if you don't have a calibration tool, can you do it without it? Yeah. So remember, I said it used to be a nightmare. That's when you used to do it without the calibration tool. There is. Um, do you know what? I've not even been into Windows system anymore, but in the past, Windows had its own um, calibration tool, if you like, and you went through the process on screen. But trust me, it's an absolute headache and it don't work as well. It's expensive, I know it is, and I don't really know. I think you can get some calibrate, is there one called a spider monkey, which is a bit, which is a bit cheaper, maybe, that rings a bell? 
um, but have a, have a look around. I would certainly advise that if you are going to be editing shots, okay, and you're going to be doing it, you know, on a monthly basis or weekly basis, whatever you're doing, you're going to need one. It's going to speed your time up. And, I, you know, I don't work for these people. If anyone's watching and they do, you want to sponsor me, you can, right? But um, I'm sorry about that. It is, you I think you can do it without a monitor calibrator, but I know for a fact it's a lot harder, I'm afraid. All right. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look at a few more. Just bear with me a minute, guys. Please bear with me a minute. Ah, uh, uh, uh. uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to. I'm just, oh, I know what I've got to do. I do apologize here. Bridge picture, how do you merge the pictures? So with the tower bridge, this is from um, Huna. Uh, with the, on the tower bridge picture, how do you merge the pictures when there's people in every picture? Um, so it's, I'll go and show you quickly. Let's just share the screen. I'll go and show you quickly, because this is a question I think that people um, uh, would ask a lot. So let's go into edit in Adobe Photoshop and there we go. Let's just bring that up in Photoshop. I am sharing the screen. While that's going, I'm going to look for another uh, collaboration. Ah, there's a good question there. I'm going to answer that one in a minute. Right. So here we go. It's as simple as that. Look, it's a mask. OK. Control and zero. So it's full screen. In and here is the mask and if i hide that mask there's the people and if i bring it back there's not the people all right basically i put one picture over the other picture and masked out one picture to reveal the picture underneath where there's no one in it so the people are in this picture okay the people are in this picture the one that's at the top here now what I've done, what, what I've effectively done is rub this picture out so it reveals the picture underneath, which has got no one in. It's just simple, really, isn't it? <laughs> it's very really simple, really. Okay, I'm going to uh, come back to me and we should be back. Yeah, just, just to right at the end of the webinar, I'm starting to get used to this, uh, to use this thing. Right, I've got one here from Omar. Should you export to JPEG or PNG and what about save for web okay is there another saving option uh, which you which and which one is best so there's different exporting options for different reasons um, if it's a general picture and you want it for print okay or just the web or whatever JPEG absolutely fine okay just export to JPEG excuse me a PNG is normally used if you've got a transparent background okay uh, this gives me a i'm going to promote my website now just so <laughs> it gives me an exa gives me an example to do that all right um so my logo here is a png and what that means is it's an image with an invisible background so i can drag that onto here and you will see the background you will see see well, there won't be no white there. Um, and that is a difference of TNG. And whereas this is a JPEG because it's a full flat image. So that's the difference between a. I uh, didn't. I knew I was going to. Just at the end there, I was getting too cocky when I. Right. So let's start again. There you go. Uh, that is a PNG. And it means that the background is invisible so you can see inside the o's and whatever else so if i drag that picture over here you would see through the lettering to the picture underneath here is a jpeg it's a flat picture of a jpeg and it will just go on to any website and stuff like that so that's the difference between a png and a jpeg um, and if, if it's for print it should be jpeg and then save for web is basically a jpeg as well i think i think you're talking about the in photoshop you can go there's a there's something called save for web and it will compress i believe 
because because I do it in Lightroom, I do it sort of export it through Lightroom. But I believe the Photoshop one gives you an option to compress the image. So here's a here's a tip for you: if you are saving for web JPEG and you want it to be a, a, a to compression, it's called a compression of either 80 to 60 yes yeah? 60 to 80 that will lower the compression of the image which will speed up the load time which will make your website load faster which will push you up the ranks in google okay so that's that one there and i think i'll answer one more all right i think i'll answer one more um that one there's one there from philippus about do i suggest a cheap monitor uh, cheap calibrator I've, I've answered that i think um ah here's a good one i'm going to answer this one i'm going to end on this one because i know people will be asking this one a lot as well it's from paul dickinson and he says can you use lightroom with photoshop elements right i, I don't think so no um and i'm going to uh, explain something to you now so photoshop elements is the lower version of photoshop you it's cheaper and you pretty much get it for free on a lot of things if you buy a printer i don't know whatever you buy that's for top so cameras you know you buy a new camera they'll chuck in uh photoshop elements okay and it's supposed to be like a warm-up for the real thing but the difference is elements doesn't work like photoshop works it's, it's similar but and, but not the same so when you actually eventually go to the real thing you start learning again and it's a, it's a right nightmare so here is my tip for you right i'm not trying to get you to spend your money and again i don't work for adobe but if you're gonna just skip past adobe element photoshop elements and go straight for the real thing you might as well because if it's something that you're going to take seriously and this is the key actually if you if you're not taking it seriously then the free apps will do. Here's a couple for you. Pixlr.com. It's a website, brilliant website. It's free. Another one is GIMP, GIMP.org. Another free program. It's free. So if you just want to, I don't know, muck about if you like, go for them. This is for people that are going to take it that bit more seriously. It doesn't have to be a pro. Certainly, if you're going to be professional, you need to take your editing more seriously if you're going to be professional. But if you're going to be you know like a real enthusiast ho uh, hobbyist you know which is like most of my students actually most of my students have got a real passion for it um or they're professional or, or turning professional and that's why we focus on teaching lightroom and photoshop because eventually you get there in the end the others are great i mean i've, I've got nothing against affinity photo or What's the other one? There's one, one vision or something. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but I've got nothing against them and I'm sure that they're bloody brilliant. But I'm telling you now, eventually you'll end up at, at Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, well, I, well, I did anyway. So there you go. Um, right, guys, listen, uh, I'll just read out uh, Rod. Thank you, Rod. Uh, I'm glad you appreciate it. And uh, who's that? there's a few more people here. Yep. Anthony, thanks a lot. Thanks for everyone. P Peter Hill, Paul Dickinson, Paul Strict. Uh, there's loads of people here. Ted, uh, Alexandru, loads of people, loads of people. Look, I just want to say thank you. Oh, if you, so there is, so now you've got the discounts, right? The BenQ one's going to be emailed to you tomorrow together with our one as well. But if you want to know what our one is right now, it's basically you use the code benq20 all right write that down benq20 and you will get 20 percent off of all of our online courses and the first month of our membership all right so all you do is you come over to our website here um, and you will click on online courses and you've got all of our courses here look through them there's free there is a free um preview on all of them as well so you can look through them and you get 20 percent off that runs out this sunday okay that runs out this sunday benq is going to send you um, a code tomorrow morning and we use the monitors in work and they're great monitors i, I can recommend them personally all right that's it guys um i hope you've enjoyed i hope you're enjoying it i hope you enjoyed it 
and I hope to see you over at the School of Photography. We do Facebook live Q&As as well during the corona crisis. We're doing that to help you out. Facebook live Q&As. Check out our Facebook page for that. Um, that's it. I am going to try and stop the webinar somehow. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I know how to do it. All right, guys, bye-bye. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's been great for me and hopefully it's been great for you. Bye-bye.